Okay, good evening and welcome to the April 5th, 2023 meeting of the Goffstown Economic Development Council. If we could start by joining me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Start by doing a roll call. Joanne, we'll start with you. Uh, Joanne Duffy, Planning and Economic Development Director. <coughs> Excuse me. Mark LeMay, Select Board Rep, filling in for Jim Craig this evening. Uh, Chris Barrett, Alternate Member. Uh, Chad Bowen, Chair. John Napoli, Vice Chair. Charlie Birchmeyer, Member. Melanie Renfrew Hebert, Member. Sarah Smith Chupakis, Member. Great, thank you so much. Uh, everyone get a chance to look through the minutes. The last meeting where we did not vote. Uh, I would love to get, do we need to go through both the sets of minutes? Because we did vote last month. Um, if the we'll board would yeah. like. We can go back to that. Okay. Um, so we will do a uh, motion to accept the minutes of March 1st, 2023. Yeah, I'll motion. Okay, thank you, Charlie. Who, was, who else was here? I will, second, I will second it as chair. Yeah. Okay. So, motion by Charlie, seconded by myself. All in favor, who is there? Aye. Abstain. Right. Abstain, 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 abstain. abstain. Okay. Oh, no. Not even sure. <laughs> that counts, but we'll go with that. The cool. abstentions don't really count towards the vote, so you're fine. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, many of you probably saw this, um, but Emma Purcell volunteered for the alternate position. And she was here, and hopefully you got a chance to read through the minutes. Um, so would anyone like to make a motion to recommend that Emma join the EDC? After that, it goes to the um, select board for final approval. Sure. I'll motion that. Okay. Charlie, second. motion. Second by Melanie. Okay, motion by Charlie, second by Melanie. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, motion passes. So select board meets Monday, right? Correct. Thank you. So that we go there Monday and she can join us next month? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, as far as, just to interrupt, she, yep. can, she can get sworn in upstairs by Kathy yep. Ball. Yep. And, I mean, once she gets sworn in, whenever the next meeting is, she's all set. She can, she can come Jump to the meeting. Right in. Fantastic. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, David Pierce. Sets presentation. Or Andy Catteret? You won't go together. I have this. I have a great idea. How about you both go together? <laughs> I didn't know you were coming. How are you? Good. How are you? Okay. Surprise. Dave Pierce, um, friends of the Gulf Town Rail Trail, and I'm also a member of the uh, Village Bridge Committee. Andrew Catteret, resident of Goffstown. I'm the chair of the Village Bridge Ad Hoc Committee. Thank you, and Do you all have this SEDS application distributed? Yep. Fine. Yep. Go ahead and say, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, so thank you. Um, I'm here representing the Village Bridge Ad Hoc Committee. Um, for, so those of you who don't know, uh, there was a prior committee that put out a report August, 2000, uh, August 23, 2021. It's on the town's website. And the first time we went through this, we were charged with looking at the feasibility, the barriers, the potential opportunities to actually uh, continuing the rail trail with a pedestrian bridge across the uh, Piscataquad River where those abutments are. Um, and so we provided that report to the select board. The select board then came forward with another charter. Uh, they they reviewed what we had, and then they said, okay, now we're going to create another committee, and this committee is going to look at a little bit more in detail some of the high-level, um, basically we, we kind of put down like the, uh, uh, you know, high-level things that we thought needed to be addressed first. And with that, one of them was uh, they had asked us to engage in creating a, a 501c3 and also to look at funding sources for a potential uh, bridge if we were to move forward with that. And what David has put together here is the uh, 
a, a SEDS application. We reviewed this at our committee last night, and we are recommending that the select board uh, sign and submit this as a priority for Goffstown. And so, David, thank you. The, uh, the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy uh, is a regional plan, and in a sense, it is a, a third party endorsement that a project, um, it could be a project like bringing gas, natural gas, into the village. You know, that, that could be a project. But in this case, it's a, the project is uh, to uh, bring, the Piscata, bring the rail trail over the Piscata Quad River. Um, having a project in this uh, regional plan is sim basically it's a third party endorsement that um, using a cr criteria to examine all these various projects uh, in a, a regional plan, it validates that the project does have economic development for regional uh, concerns. And uh, it doesn't provide any money, <laughs> but it simply says we've evaluated the project, it has regional significance, and it's like uh, the ace in your hip pocket. So when you go after a real grant that has money, uh, then uh, you use this as one of your letters of recommendations about why it should be approved for an award for a grant. Um, the uh, completion of the rail trail was in the 2019 version of this um, comprehensive economic development strategy. And uh, every time I wrote a grant on the Friends of the Rail Trail, I, I brought this to the evaluator's attention that whatever I wanted to do was part of a, a regional uh, plan to finish the trail. And it, you know, it may have helped because I did get grants. <laughs> um, so it, it's a, uh, the bridge committee endorsed it for the selectmen to assign it uh, next Monday night. It would be appropriate if this committee also uh, said from a, it would be endorsed over to the select board. There's a question for David. Yes. I heard a very interesting part of your speech, your comment, David, about bringing the natural gas across the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but. No. Uh, yeah, that, you know, bringing natural gas into the village. Into the village. <laughs> I, I didn't say how. No, but I mean, <laughs> please keep that in your mind with the new bridge. If the new bridge were to come along, if the new bridge were to be made, maybe we could put a six-inch piece of pipe there in the ground already on the bridge, ready to go, so sure. that later on down the road it's one step less. Because sure. we talk about it, the infrastructure, the board of selectmen, we talk about it quite frequently. And, I mean, I think... If, if it were to happen, if it does happen, that would be a major step into yeah. getting it onto this we're side so of the river. We're, yeah. <laughs> I'm almost sorry I brought up another project. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and, but of course, natural gas lines are typically run along the shoulders of roads because they want to find homes and businesses mm -hmm. to tap into that line. Uh, yeah. Some of the uh, rail trail for a much of our length is in the backyards Correct. of residents, yeah. not on the main street. Just an idea, David. I mean, thinking, thinking ahead. You know that if it if it were to come through, maybe we could. So, and um, part of this. Uh, it does show a feasibility of, of a potential type bridge that could be built. I've tried to emphasize that it is a conceptual uh, design. It hasn't been reviewed by any professional engineering firm. Um, I drew that as simply it's a, I faithfully replicated uh, what we call the Singer Bridge, where Manchester built uh, over the, for their rail car that they built this a bridge over the Piscata Quad River, and this is an exact, I'm using that as an exact twin, uh, exactly all the same structural components, um, just as a, uh, a conceptual idea. 
so it, but this, uh, this strategy plan, it's uh, one step forward as uh, to enhance the potential of getting a grant in the future. Okay. As, far as, as far as grants go, um, perhaps the best opportunity for the town is a uh, use of federal money that's administered by DOT here in the state. It's called a Transportation Alternative Program Grant. Uh, it's these grants are issued once every four years or a round of bidding is once every four years um, the next round of bidding is 18 months away fall of 24 um, so uh, one of the our bridge committee potentially they could say you know we were charted to say what's a way of raising money through a grant we could come back to the select board and said, yeah, your best option is fall of 24, put an application in for a, a TA uh, grant. Uh, that, uh, that would be 2025 money. Mm -hmm. It's five-year money. So in the course of that five years, you do engineering. You, you might have to do land acquisition. You, you do design of a bridge. Then you go get construction bridge bids, <laughs> and you also have to hire somebody to do uh, professional engineering to supervise the construction, making sure it's built properly. All that could occur with you know, grant money in, in within that five-year span. And timing-wise, you know, David brought this to our attention. This is due uh, on the 12th or 21st? 21st. Mm -hmm. 21st. And then it's, you know, you don't have another chance to apply for this for another... For, I, I suspect this particular uh, round of getting documents blessed by the, the two planning, regional planning commissions uh, when it is four years, another four yeah. years. So this timing is, in, you know, that's kind of why we're moving it quickly. We mm -hmm. learned about this. David brought it to our attention. We got to get this in. And then in for 18 the, months, we may have another opportunity, and this will just help that. <laughs> for the uh, 2019 version of this regional plan, uh, regional document, I was on, I was one of six evaluators that looked at the projects from the, the Concord Regional Planning Commission as well as our Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission. So there was probably 50 different document uh, projects that were evaluated. And uh, they're they're ranked uh, like this would be a recreational the uh, category, and we actually ranked every project from you know one to ten, which has more prominence over the others, uh, because in this case, uh, Gulfstown would have a a plan before the regional. Uh, commission to be judged, I, I won't be one of the evaluators. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> they know I'd be biased from the start. Well, D Dave, normally I would ask questions about timelines, funding sources, contracting, but you were incredibly thorough just now. Um, so thank you yourself personally and the ad hoc committee and anyone who worked on this. I mean, this is great. Um, whether we need a vote or not to endorse this, I'll still take one just for the record. Yeah. Uh, but before we do that, any questions? Wow. See? Very thorough. Very. Very thorough. So to, to break this out, there were, it's not, I wouldn't call it expedited, but we have this April 21st deadline to make sure we can potentially get 2025 money in 2024. And this helps us along that path. What else could help us along that path that is just as critical that we could have any influence over? It, well, uh, 18 months from now is an opportunity to submit for a grant. Right. And, and uh, uh, the select board would have to decide who's going to you know, write that grant, mm -hmm. park department, DPW, or would you re allow the bridge committee to write the grant? Sure. Uh, you know, that's a decision the select board would make. Yeah. Understood. But th this, what you're saying is this sets... Um, application slash survey slash response is very helpful when we go to get that kind of grant money. So I'm hearing select board approval endorsement from us. Um, 
anything else that we have any influence over that could be at, as helpful or helpful in any way, shape, or form as we go forward. It, it's, uh, I've, I believe I, I've already referenced in here the Economic Development Committee was yep. the uh, uh, the concept of having a bridge was yep. was first endorsed by this committee. So and I mentioned that in here under uh, uh, the, one of the questions in the application was what other public bodies have have reviewed this project. You know, the fact that this committee was endorsing the project right from the start will will help uh, this application be approved. Great. I think Thank you. Dick Bruno's on this committee. Yes. Yep. And yes. he had a letter, a letter that he yeah. submitted. He would like the letter yeah. read into the record. Okay. That's what he's requested. <coughs> I just had one question for David. Are you on the select board's agenda for this coming Monday? Yes. Okay, so then you'll ask them to approve it at that time and then we'll send it over to Southern New Hampshire Planning. Derek will ask. Okay. Uh, I'm available for questions. Oh, okay. Okay. Because okay. I was the author of the document. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, so, you know, I think from the committee perspective, if there's any other resources that you become aware of, I mean, we only know our box yeah. and we are not grant writers. <laughs> we are. You know, we're thankful to have David, Friends of the Rail Trail, on Scott's this. raising his hand. <laughs> so, so that would be helpful if there's other th things. Like, I just learned about this uh, community center investment program that, uh, you know, again, the timeline on this, and I sent this to Derek, um, it's for a um, competitive program that awards funds for the rehabilitation expansion of building community centers. And I don't know if community centers means physical buildings, or does a community center mean... A center of a community. I attended that workshop and I right. have it, a recording of it. And they did supply, I can't say what it is off the top of my head, but they did supply a definition of what a community center would be. So I can look that up for you. Yeah, under the bullets it says primary purpose of the, uh, of the facility must be recreation. So I'm assuming that is, but maybe a bridge is, I don't, I don't know. But those are the things that we don't know about and I think would, we need to take action if there's something, or recommend someone take action. <laughs> but I do want to thank David for his sure. work and Friends of the Rail Trail uh, bringing this forward. Since I sat on the evaluation committee for these projects in 2019, I, I, I'm familiar with all the correct words that should be in the application that, that would enhance it over other applications. So I've, this is num this is going to get first place. <laughs> All right. I like it. I like that confidence. That's good. Okay. Well, thank you so much. So, Joanne, I think what I would do is ask that um, it doesn't matter to me if it's you or me or anyone to read what um, Dick Bruno asked to be put into the record and then ask for a motion to endorse the bridge project mm -hmm. and second and vote, if that makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Would you like to read it or would you like me to do so? Whatever is your preference. <laughs> Go for chat. All right, I'll do it. So this is from Dick Bruno to the EDC committee members uh, regarding the report on the ad hoc bridge committee. Uh, Dick raised my apologies for not being able to attend tonight's meeting, but I'll be on a plane at this time heading to a trip to Portugal. I know, poor me, but someone had to do it. <laughs> I have attended the last two ad hoc bridge com committee meetings since the EDC last met. The committee has made significant progress towards a plan to build and fund the bridge. The steps have been taken to begin the process, which are as follows. Uh, he didn't number them, but I'll number them. One, recommend to the select board that they begin negotiations with the Rotary Club to purchase the Rotary Park, which is a critical piece to this project. That land will be the west end of the bridge and is where people will access the bridge to and from downtown. Two, recommend to the select board that they approve a plan for the town to work with the friends of the Goffstown Rail Trail to use their 501c status to collect funds to be used to support the bridge. Three, David Pierce, who will attend tonight's meeting, has prepared an application for SEDS, Comprehensive Economic Development Strategies, to get the bridge project on the list of recommended projects. The application for SEDS projects has a deadline of April 21st. David has done an outstanding job in preparation, uh, in preparing for the application, excuse me. It is well written and describes the concept of the pedestrian bridge project in detail. The application needs the blessing of the select board, which we are hopeful they will endorse. Once the application is submitted, it will give the project an advantage when state and or federal grants become available. I'm sure David will be happy to entertain any questions you may have regarding the application. Uh, finally, I recommend to all the members of the EDC that they endorse the actions that the ad hoc committee has taken thus far. 
This is a very important economic development project. Having the rail trail terminate mm -hmm. in town, okay, thank you, in town will be a significant development to enhance our business sector while improving a wonderful recreational asset for all our citizens. Sincerely, Dick Bruno. So, um, it looks like we're being asked to vote to endorse the project. Mm -hmm. um, so I would take a motion on that if someone... I'll make a motion to endorse the uh, project. Okay. Second it. Right. So, motion by Melanie, seconded by Chris. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank, Thank you very you much. much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Agenda. There it is. Okay, so starting with old business, we will ask Scott Slattery to come up and talk about the implementation of the business survey. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Thank you again. I uh, just want a quick comment. What a great turnout you folks had for Springfest on Saturday. I met some incredible folks and got to give my business card out and chat with people about the survey and all the things that we did. Um, my apologies, I expected to have our Doodle survey out today, but I got pulled away to campus. I was, actually was just talking and it was explaining that I haven't even made it home to my office because we don't have an office still over here since the really? flood when the sprinkler burst. Can't find a contractor. I think everybody's not, yeah, everybody can relate to that type of thing. So, but just so everybody knows, we're all geared up to start next week actually on the ground great moving around actually had great conversation with mr. Bruno on Saturday about it he did you know commiserate about his trip to Portugal and <laughs> how as soon as he got back we get started but I'll be sending out the doodle poll to everybody to find out availability taking a couple hours to start maybe on a Wednesday or Friday um, Joanne and I had a uh, coffee the other day at the coffee shop around the corner and we thought that, that might be a good way to do it just started slow like that mm -hmm. as you know from when I mapped it last time we have two distinct sectors two distinct areas the mast road section and then the Daniel Plummer Road area is where the primary concentration of the businesses are so Joanne and I went ahead and made just kind of an executive decision in that we're just kind of assigning the businesses to people mm -hmm. I know before we wanted to try to involve and get to we're just saying these are the businesses we want you to go talk to. We think about 10 or 15 businesses per volunteer, so not a heavy lift. Yep. We are prepared. I have you know the QR codes keyed up for both the big survey and the small survey. So I'd like to capture data for both and sure. see and see you know what we get out of that. But I'm really excited to to finally get out. Uh, we've been talking about this and kind of kicking the can, and you know no one's more anxious as I am you know to keep doing this. Um, and then I think that you know a lot of this stuff that we're talking about kind of goes part and parcel to what Mr. Pierce and Mr. Cataret were talking about. Um, UNH Extension, not my area of expertise, but does a lot of work with trails and things. Mm -hmm. The economic impact of connecting the downtown to the trail it is a lot of people don't think about it. I invite everybody to take a look at what they did in Keene, right, with the trails that they did downtown and connecting everything to downtown. Everything is now on an app called Trail Finder. So if you're on the trail and you're walking with your kids and the kid needs to use the bathroom, you know, look right up on your Trail Finder where you can find a public bathroom. I, when I want to go grab a cup of coffee, I want to meet you in at Apotheca or you know wherever. You can have all that stuff right on. It's all these free services. That Goffstown's get on. Trail is on there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And we can just keep adding to it. But yeah, like connecting it to downtown like that will be hugely impactful. Agreed. So when we're ready to go, I'll keep looping you on in on everything, Mr. Chairman, so you Appreciate know kind of where we're at with everything. Um, but I'm pretty excited yeah. to, to really get out there and talk to you. But uh, did have a, have a great opportunity to talk to a lot of the businesses um, on Saturday. Great. Um, great. Well, thank you so much. So what we will expect, um, basically just the assignments, get them and start yep. going, right? Yep. We're going to okay. send them by next month's meeting. We should be able to at least report back how we made out in our first you know kind of efforts. We're still kind of a combination. I'll be willing to fill out surveys with businesses right on the spot, yep. or just linking them to the code and encouraging them to do it, you know, online. I will then keep an eye and monitor that who's actually going online and following mm -hmm. up, and then following up with a gentle nudge, saying, you know, can you do that's really important that we get that information. It's important for you folks. Important for the select board. 
uh, you know, and the other businesses here in town. I just had one question. Scott, when um, you send us mm -hmm. the business names, mm -hmm. addresses, should we just bring the QR code or should we have hard copy? You'll have a hard copy that I will provide you with that has okay. all the information on it. Okay. Okay, that you can either give us it because we're going to get an instance where you're going to get to a business and they're not going to have time. They're yeah. going to be like, I'm sorry, I really don't have time. I want you to be able to give them something right there that they can just okay. give to. But you know, obviously, the hope is that we can spend a few minutes with people, yeah. um, you know, and just try to give at least some basic information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Questions? I'm, I'm interested. I actually walked around to every single vendor and gave them that information. So I'm interested to see if any of them actually completed it after Spring Fest. I will let everybody know what I hear from, because I did the same thing, gave my business card, I brought copies of the survey and then the, the link to the, the code as well. So, you know, I'll let, I'll let everybody know what response we get. And I'm so. sorry I missed you at Spring Fest. I, I had a, like I said, I saw Joanne, I saw Chet and <laughs> and then um, Charlie I saw over at the table for a few minutes and then just kind of bebopped around. Spent a lot of time talking with Mr. Bruno. And, uh, <laughs> I, I just didn't, you know, enjoy. He has a great perspective on things. Yeah. I'll tell you that was an overwhelmingly successful yeah. event. Like oh. surprised us. We had our um, PAC committee meeting last night and just blew us out of the water. Did, did, did you have a count on how many people attended? We're <laughs> looking at about 3,000. Wow. wow. That yeah. came through That's through awesome. the day. It felt like That's it. That's great. <laughs> Trying to walk <laughs> through the aisles, she was like this. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, there was a lull and a, then it would get like really crazy. It makes yeah. sense compared to the, yeah. the amount that mm -hmm. came in. Um, it, it, it tracks. Um, yeah. and, and I'm not on the committee that did the decompression about it, um, but from what I hear, they got some really good feedback. <laughs> Um, we have great, oh, I don't, shouldn't say it out loud, I'll let Dan say that, but I think we have great plans for next year and going Good. forward. It, it was a really successful event. That's great. And the, the pack and the Boy Scouts and the, um, the girls pack mm -hmm. will really benefit from it. Yeah. Everybody seemed to enjoy themselves. It was great. And weren't those scouts amazing going yeah. out and bringing people's stuff yeah. in the building? That was it very out, helpful. Being really, you know, really, yeah. really helpful. You must have been very effective when Chris and I came in and we went. We started going around to the tables like, oh, yep, she was already here before. <laughs> like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> we go like, oh, Sarah she went to she was already, We have the, we have the flyer. <laughs> and I made sure I got all the business cards with all the contact information in case they didn't use the flyer so that we could reach out to them. Yeah. Yeah. Try and put two. So making some progress. Absolutely. See, all, all three of us together, we make a one big team. I, sure sure <laughs> sure I think we got like two people maybe that must have been <laughs> preoccupied, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. The dance group, right? That was the yeah. end. No, oh, that was my Anything else for Scott on the there. actual business? Oh, yeah. Security knows who we are. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Scott on the actual uh, implementation of the business survey or anything? Just looking forward to it. Thank right. you, folks. Appreciate Scott, your thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Vice Chair here to my right came up with a brilliant idea. We're already talking about point number four, so we might as well continue the sure. Spring Fest recap. Um, so, Melanie, thank you. I had heard when I got there, Charlie let me know that you'd already been all over the place, <laughs> and so that was that was great. Joanne, you were there all day, right? I was. Was there any trends you noticed? Anyone come up and say, hey? Uh, no, I think if we do it again, we need to have something to attract people. Like, if you notice the people across from us, Triangle Credit Union, they had that little game going. We had candy. There was we a had lot candy of and a there. lot of candy <laughs> was eaten. I signed That's a lot of bingo sure. cards. Yep. Yes, yeah. me too. People yeah. that would feign interest just yeah. to get the candy. Yeah. The kids were the funniest. They were, there was like... And then they, yeah. they, they thought they had to ask permission to take a piece, and it was funny. Um, but we, you know, we answered questions. People had questions about zoning, and the, the zoning map seemed to attract attention more than anything. Maybe next year we could do like a larger one and put it on a poster board or, or foam board. Yeah. Um, the uh, most people, you know, they look at the papers, and, and then they just keep, would keep on walking because I think. Our intent was really to focus on the businesses, and it was kind of not the place to say, you know, 
hey, do you want a map of, you know, yeah. whatever? So it at least people got to introduce themselves and get the cards and all of that, so that was really helpful. But as far as interacting, they were busy. Those businesses, yeah. that, that candle guy said he almost sold out of all of his products. Josh, I saw right? that. Yeah. Josh, I saw um, that. 444. Yeah. 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 So um, I'm sure the other businesses did just as well. I know I spent a lot of money there. <laughs> so you, you know what it seems like then? It seems like the most productive thing that we did is part of what Melanie and Sarah were doing by walking around mm -hmm. to the businesses. So maybe... Well, Charlie was saying maybe we don't even need a table, but... I don't know if we could just like meet. Well, oh no, we call store. those su suitcases and <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah. Well, we could do a table. A table. Yeah, if we working with their products. And if we adjust our approach to con connect with the businesses beforehand and then have a table there, so we're yeah. attracting because you know people at the tables will walk around themselves. Maybe they find us and we figure out a way to get the feedback we're looking for. Um, right. That way, because every two years, right? Well, I don't know how. I think she said you just said you're going to do it again well, next year. I hope or we do it every it year, maybe twice. I, Great. I'm not sure. I will. I will check in with Dan and and them and see. The Lions Club did it every two years, but now that the Boy Scouts are doing it, so it might be different. Annual. Yeah. Or twice a year, you said? <laughs> no, no, no. That's just my. <laughs> no, no. I just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I was, think Dan would would not agree with I that. I think. Yeah, I think Dan <laughs> is a very busy man. Yeah. Um, and a, and a great volunteer. Um. And it seems to be a family thing, which is fantastic. Yeah. We were talking about some other things we could do. They have video monitors set up, and they did put up um, information about the EDC, and they talked a lot and rotated through things. Yeah. Um, but I think instead of some of the more electronic, uh, uh, some of the more paper things, we could bring, um, say, I have on my HP, I can, it's a basically a screen, right? Mm -hmm. We could run. A bunch of information on it. Yeah, pretty slowly, so people walking by could could get um, those beautiful graphics and visuals that you right. did, but in more of a catch your eye as you walk right. by right. sort of way. And we're doing a survey. If we had the survey available, so mm -hmm. people could you know see the survey right. like online. Right. If we but did a different and, survey, and we could probably do. We were doing a raffle of some sort, but we could probably do a raffle more effectively. Maybe we could have a business raffle. So people who are there, like the businesses, we can say, oh, we're going to take your card and right. put it in your yeah. raffle. And hand it to the businesses as you go around. And yeah. That would have been a good idea. We may be more successful at that with, than some other places because we don't have a product we're selling. Right. So they might be more interested in doing that than, say, for, right. you know. We could, studio or something. It'd be a great place to hand out an invitation to to come introduce mm -hmm. yourself. We're here to introduce the EDC to you, and we'd like you to come introduce yeah. your business to us. Mm -hmm. What yeah. time was set up? Was so set up was um, I think it started really early, like seven thirty or eight. I oh, think with so. the businesses being there. Yeah, because that was you know. I don't know if that was what you were alluding to, but before the Spring Fest starts, would be, is that what you're saying? Would be a good time to go around, and then you know, if we collected business yeah. cards and did a business card raffle, yeah. maybe that's what we could get that, that face time. That time is was very. It's a great idea, but that time was very busy, and because um, some uncoord of them had uncoordinated for many of the businesses coming in, larger not displays knowing where things. they were going to set up, how yeah. they were going to set up. Um, having done it before, maybe with time, that will be easier. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think looking for a natural lull or something. Yeah, there were lulls. Or as people are closing like, up. Even in the beginning from, from, well, so we set up a little after nine-ish and it didn't open until ten. Right. So there was a lull there. But even from ten to eleven there was a lull. And then at eleven it just went crazy. Yeah. A lot of people <laughs> thought they were confused and thought it was an outdoor event. Yeah, and they were concerned why. because of the rain. Um, but I don't think overall, over time, throughout the day, that it affected the number of people no. who came. And I didn't see any empty business booths. I didn't either. No, they were all full, yeah, right? They were full. Yeah. So, so we're looking at it. So we adjust our approach in knowing that the businesses are there to find, to look for and find their customers. Those right. businesses themselves are our customers and potential businesses. Just a slight adjustment to how we go into it could could really be maybe maybe, maybe, more impact. maybe we could just approach it differently. Reach out to, to Dan and, and yep. see if we can do a sponsorship and in lieu of a table, maybe we can get some you know message out to you know. 
That's genius. When when he's you know when he's, like he's communicating with the people and like you know we're all, the EDC is helping put this on, um, and this is what they're doing and, and this is what they want to help with. I don't want to speak for Dan, but he seems like the kind of guy who would take you know some yeah. sort of negotiation on this. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> He'd bounce around on it. It's okay. And maybe there's a new business in town. Like if we're really looking at it for the future, like we're trying to promote new businesses. So let's say like you know the brewery came in. Maybe, you know, we have a table, so maybe we invite them to come and be at the table with mm -hmm. us. Kind of like a partnership to show yeah. that, you know, we're here to help and, you know, they can have their own, you know, obviously we're working on the peddlers and hoppers and, hoppers and peddlers license, you know, in lieu of their conversation with us. But I'm just saying so that other people can see, because I was trying to use examples when I was talking to people. Yeah. Like if you're having an issue where something is, not allowing you to expand your business, whether it be, you know, finding a second location, finding employees, mm -hmm. you know, all, um, something in place that makes it more difficult for you. And, you know, one, I think one person brought up something, and I honestly, I don't, he started talking to me and then his booth got full. <laughs> uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that happens, obviously. But um, I, I think if we had, you know, someone with us, that would be amazing. Yeah, Sarah, I think that's brilliant. What about sponsoring? Um, do you know, like a new one or two new businesses to help them afford to be able to do an event like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cause you know, when, partnering with them, like you said. Because when we were, don't take this the wrong way, but when we Never. were getting the table, I was like, wow, that's expensive. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I know that I couldn't afford it. Do it like my business, that wouldn't be like on our marketing. Yeah, I'm surprised that some of the smaller ones were there because of the, well, actually, the tables themselves, if you don't sponsor, were like $100. Oh, okay. Yeah, so but still. we were a sponsor, so that's why it was more. That makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. yeah but they had different levels for mm -hmm. sponsorship. Gotcha. Yeah. But it would be, I mean, that's the other thing we could, that could be one of the raffles, too. Yeah. Like for the following year, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to sponsor a table and... You know, right. Your if we can get the hawkers and peddler stuff sorted out, maybe we could sponsor a food truck go to court. That'd be pretty cool. Like the EDCs put a table about a uh, food truck. That Except that, that the Boy Scouts would would then lose money selling the food, and they're the ones who are. But I do like. It. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask, Mr. Chair, would that would we be able to select a business no. as the EDC to sponsor? Okay. No, but I loved where the conversation was going, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to it's okay. But, but I think, but I really like the I, the combination of these two ideas, where we can get a message out to the businesses prior to and coordinate that ahead of time. And then I don't think there's any issue with, I think like a, you're talking like like a get like a talk show. We'll have a guest mm -hmm. show up for an hour or so or 15 minutes. We could we could certainly I think have some businesses that want to come and stand with us for a little bit. I don't think there'd be an issue with that. So. Um, I think that could be really cool. Like maybe combine the two. You mean like a oh. business who doesn't have a table? Yes. Just come in at a certain hour. Yeah. That's a good idea. I would say strongly just bring that to back to the citizens committee mm -hmm. and um, and see what kind of things could be worked out or would even be allowable. Right. Good. Mike and the audience want to come up. Come on up, Mike. Thanks. <clears throat> Mike Lawler, Six Prospect Street. Um, just here with the general public. So I like the ideas. One of the things I was thinking about is if you're going to have visual aids on a computer, maybe what you can do is if you fill out a copy of the survey and send us your logo, we'll put it on the revolving photo display for the computer. Because mm -hmm. then there's immediately a, a benefit for a company putting something up. Yeah. You've got the logos, you've got like the tie-in to them. They filled out the survey. The outreach is already happening. I, I like that. You guys came up with it. I just stole it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that brings us to our Facebook page. Our for, poor Facebook page only has 20-something followers. Can we get any more after Springfest? Um, if I haven't checked in the last few days, but I checked <coughs> like the day or two after, and there were a few. Um, but, you know, a few, like three or four. So if you could all, it's... It's the Gosstown Economic Development Council. That's the name of the page. If you could all like it and then share it with your friends and say, hey, could, could you like this page and pass it on? Can we do that? Thinking of that idea about um, 
you know, if you fill out a survey, get a logo. If you like us on Facebook, then we can put out the. Yeah, we'll see I like that. You do that to the business Fantastic. owners. I can do that. And I'll try. Um, some business owners love this, some don't, but I'll try when we, we go around to the businesses to get a, you know, a little selfie with them in, in front of their, because I think one of, the, one of the pieces that'll help us get out there is more posts. Right? And that will be good for Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Yep. After we had some of the new people come in and talk about the businesses, I did make a point of going out to see them and just make a post on, it's all my personal stuff, oh, but make a post about how nice it was to meet them in our community, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to going out there mm -hmm. to see them. That's great. Awesome. Sample products, something. Somebody feed me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it feels like we, it went well, we clearly had, there was good turnout there. We now know we can try a new approach or two, and maybe get more out of it for the EDC and the businesses around us. So, um, and we're thinking potentially annually. So it's it's nice that we can have this as part of the conversation throughout the year. And again, that's just my thought. I'm not sure. But no, I understand. But I think annual would be great if we could make that happen. So, any other thoughts on Springfest? <laughs> uh, I thought it was great. And not, so many people, I'm sure you saw it now when we went up, we, uh, we'd ask, have you heard of the Economic Development Council? And they'd all said no. <laughs> <laughs> until, until, until they do say Springfest. That. So, yeah, I thought we really accomplished some goals there. Great. Agreed. Great. So, Joanne, I think this is one of those things I talked about. We'll just keep it on um, sort of old business. And some, some months we may not say much about it, but other months it will just remind us and cue us up that it's there. Okay. Um, I skipped orders. So going back to, oh, Hawkers and Peddlers. So I'm sorry that Jim's not here because he was the one who asked about this. But I can tell you that I know very little about what's happening with the state because the governor had tacked on, I, I don't know what it's called, but something to the budget. And one of the items in there was to eliminate several state licenses. Oh, a rider? Do Maybe it's a rider. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yep. And so one of those licenses was the Hawkers and Peddlers, and he felt that the state did not need to, it was, he was quoted in the paper as saying, we don't need to, to provide a license for someone to sell hot dogs. That was his. Um, example of the hawkers and peddlers. So since then, I, I think everything's been amended and amended and amended and nothing's really passed yet. So I don't have any answers about what the state is doing. But this list is the towns that I could find that had hawkers and peddlers license. And, you know, the, some of them had very little information, but the information I did find, I I, bowl, I put in bold the towns that have a criminal check, which are very few. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I, if I saw how much they were charging, I added that as well. I think our fees are fine. Mm -hmm. They're not that expensive. Um, so I think Jim was more focused on the criminal check and how many do have it. So the ones who, some of them do the state criminal check, some of them have, mostly the cities have the criminal check done in-house by their yeah. police. Um, and then most of them don't do anything with criminal check. So somebody had said to me, well, what's the difference if you have um, someone, you know, working in a store yep. that you've gone into, like, they could be, have a criminal record and you would never know it because there's no criminal check required. So what's the difference if they're in a food truck and they have a criminal life uh, record? So Jim, Jim um, it makes sense that he would want us to look into this. I think, I'm not speaking for Jim, but I feel confident he is looking to make sure that as a committee or as a town, that we are, as a town specifically, mm -hmm. we are not breaking any precedent or so that you know some liability will come <coughs> right. towards us because something happened and we didn't do anything. This shows me, shows me that if, if we decided not to go down that criminal background check road, we have plenty mm -hmm. of other towns that also do not do that. So I think uh, we, can, we can make that recommendation. Maybe we can loop back around with the police chief. Okay, we can do that. And then, the, and then it's, you know, then maybe write up a new ordinance okay. and bring it to the select board. All right, I'll go with you, do that. Anyone else want to join us, with police chief? Okay, sure, we can, can do that. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure it's open, everybody. Um, um, I've also been following the budget 
process it pretty closely over the last few weeks, and I wouldn't mind providing an update on where they're at with those mm -hmm. licenses. That'd Just where they are in this moment in time and where, what it looks like. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we'll circle back with the chief. We'll check with you next month as far as see where we're at and go from there. Great. Thank you. Um, and then Sarah, public meeting at the brewery. So Sarah <laughs> doesn't know I put this on here. Oh, sorry, Sarah. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> but a, a few meetings ago, you had made a suggestion that we, we may want to consider that and invite some of the businesses. So I thought, let's not lose that idea. Yeah. And I did go to the brewery and talk to them and see if they'd be open to us doing something there. And they're like, yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was not a question. And they were like, yeah, any time, you know, just like let the us first know. Wednesday of every month. It took me a second, but I got there. <laughs> yeah, I like it. There you go. I got it right it's away. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's in Pinardville, so it ties into what we're trying to do down there. If we could, maybe after this, this meet, the, what am I trying to say? After we all go out to some of the businesses, maybe we could at least have more contact information and then maybe have like an invite to so many at a time because that place isn't that large. So we can, I think, I see, so... If we do it right, we can get at least email addresses and create some sort of distribution list yeah. for the brewery meeting. I think that makes sense. So we can all just send that to you, what we, what we find, yeah. and you can make a master yeah. list. Okay. I mean, I think I like Scott it. has a lot of that information now. There is most of it. Yeah. We can get like names attached to it di directly so we go to the right person. Great. Um, but I think I, I, I did this in Hooksit, and it worked really well because when you're somewhere off out of the government building and you're you know just sitting down with these people they really open up and tell you what's really going on and what they you know and some of them have really good ideas on you know the direction it should be going and that kind of thing so it's it's actually very helpful right I agree so action steps we'll just get names to go with the email addresses we probably already have and then send out an invite once we talk to the brewery and find out what works for them okay so do you use some budget to like cater it, sort of? Or is it That's a, they I didn't even think of that, but food. maybe we, we can't. I mean, like, but the EDC, can, right, we, can, can we, we provide we drinks? We can't provide liquor, I mean beer. No, no, but but I think we're oh. talking about food. Oh, bring food in, yes, you can bring food in to That's the place. That's a good place. idea. Yeah. They go yeah. next door to the pizza joint. Yeah. The pizzas, yeah. and they bring the pizzas over, I know yeah. that. Oh, they do. And they go down to Subway. and. Oh, so they know, we know somebody who makes great chicken. I was going to say, they should go with Charlie's. Yeah. We, we provide their, we provided, well, we lent them a warmer, so they do come to us and get food sometimes, but not as much as they had in the past. It's probably more convenient to go, like, right there, yeah, yeah. I imagine. But we can do something like that, encourage well, that, and then yeah. maybe maybe provide some funding for it, Charlie's once we figure out exactly how much sure. we need. How much we'll do a, budget is. Because we know we have to do a vote. <laughs> now um, that we're using the money, we should, you know, yeah, get know. more next time. Check it out. <laughs> I like that. So, so we'll follow up on this in, in between, hopefully have some more contact information and go from there yes okay and then wait oh we went through it all <laughs> so the only so thing the, is the go ahead. reappointments and I'd like to if we can Joe and you and I can talk in between meetings but to add to the agenda for next month I recognize this is not a significant mover of the needle but a, a meeting or two each year in the Penarville area I know um, Bartlett, had, it's been done before, so we have to talk to GTV, and then maybe, I know St. A's has often offered the mm -hmm. space in the New Hampshire Institute in politics to do a meeting, so just a couple of connections there, maybe do a couple of meetings a year in Penarville, I think would be good. David has also off offered That's right. the yep. church. Yep. <clears throat> so we can talk with GTV to see where they can go and what their capabilities are. I think you have to find a place where the people in Penardville are used to going, comfortable mm -hmm. going to. Like Bartlett, because they built there. Mark, you live there. What would you suggest? Bartlett's a hard place to meet because they have all that refrigeration. No, it's not, it's not that it's kind bad. kind of loud. I, I mean, I s spend hours there. I didn't, did I, don't, I, don't, I don't notice the, the <laughs> noise. I just, you toned know. Toned it out. Yeah, you know, toned, it, toned it off, but. Um, Bartlett's a good place. I would say the firehouse, but we're not AD, 
the e compliant. We don't oh, okay. have an we don't have an elevator to get to the second floor. But mm. Charlie brings up a good point. Saint A's, the political science building, is yeah. another good one. Um, Do they charge yeah. for that? I, I don't think so. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, you know, they, when I, I talked to the the director there, and it was absolutely offered free of charge. Oh, okay. Just a, a community kindness. Mm -hmm. That's nice. So. I mean, the other place we could go, we'd have to make a reservation for it, is Ollie's. They, they use their, their side to the left. They, they yeah. use that for meetings oh. and stuff like that. Um, White Birch has a similar um, Yeah, this other place. White Birch, they have their, their function room. Okay. So I think, Joanne, we just talked to GTV in between now and then with those options, see if they can, what they can and cannot do, and mm -hmm. then we'll bring back some options next month. And maybe okay. when we do it outside, maybe when we do it in Penarco, we do something in the warm weather so mm -hmm. that we can actually have like something a little bit outside, you know, something to draw attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like it. So we'll come back to that next month. And then you said that the next thing is a recommendation? Yes. Um, Dick Bruno and yourself, um, need to be reappointed so you need to send a recommendation if you he's he's still interested if you're still interested to the select board for um recommendation for reapproval reappointment i'm sorry okay so we'll start with um richard bruno a recommendation for reappointment i'll make it okay second i'll second so made by melly seconded by john all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. motion passes and is there any do you want to do I will make a recommendation <laughs> for uh, Chet Bowen. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Looks like that's it. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Motion is seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 That concludes our meeting. Thank Aye. you very much. Aye.